What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video, man. So we just finished up the fast lane live stream reaction. Shout out to everyone that was a part of the live stream, man. You guys always make our live stream reactions that much better. And tonight's show went fairly quick. There weren't that many matches, only five matches on the card. Wasn't that much, you know, you know, filler stuff. They, it, they kind of flowed into the matches very quickly on the show. And I can appreciate that. Like this seemed like, you know, way quicker than I expected it to be. But once again, it was only five matches. So they kind of got in, got out, and that was pretty much it. So we're going to get right into this. I took a few notes, tried to as much as I possibly could on what happened tonight man appreciate y'all joining me in joining with me for my uh thoughts and opinion video i look i always look forward to doing my thoughts and opinion videos after a major pay-per-view because i know you guys like to check them out so on the pre-show before the show even started up there's like this white van white uh suv pulls up someone steps out it is jade cargill in this uh <laughs> quite revealing outfit showing how physically fit she is boy oh boy i agree with booker t on commentary shucky ducky quack quack that's exactly what he said soon as she hopped out she looked like a big deal ridiculous her abs got abs it's fucking crazy what she had on and then she greeted triple h or whatnot and they started talking and you know walking together in the garage area you saw the people paparazzi you know camera people taking pictures of her as she was walking out she looked like a big deal and that's all they did they just showed her she didn't appear on the show just to kind of build up hype for her which that's what they should be doing so that was a cool moment jay cargill definitely they're trying to, you know, build her up as a big mega star going into the company or a big star and 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 want people to get that vibe who don't know her. Like, who is this person? I, should I be looking out for this person? They're, they're making her seem like a big deal and they're doing a good job at it so far. So we I was surprised they started this match off as the first match. Cody and Jay versus Damian, uh, Damian Priest and Finn Balor. Obviously, the baby faces when they came out just a huge reaction when uh cody and jay came out hit their entrances just mega over just ridiculous crowd was hype crowd was lit i put in my notes cody and jay are super over with the crowd anything they did offensively just got the crowd hype so there was a spot in the match that i definitely want to make mention uh, it was a stalled superplex from the second rope uh, to uh, Finn Balor from Cody Rhodes. And it was a nice, like, at one point in the match, uh, he, he did a stalled superplex or whatnot to Finn Balor. Cody did just, you know, standing in the ring. But then he also did it on the uh, second rope. And it was a beautiful move. And he had him stalled up there for a little bit. But then he was selling, uh, Cody was selling him landing on his head and neck area and that was kind of the focus of his injury throughout the match so at one point jay starts picking up the speed hitting some fast-paced moves on damian priest and he ends up running the ropes and hitting damian priest with a spear obviously you know roman had, that's his finishing move kind of a nod to roman or more so like a like a uh you know in a disrespectful way you know or in a mocking way not a disrespectful way but more in a mocking way he hits damian priest with a spear and the crowd goes crazy for that and then of course as you know it's not gonna only just be two members of the judgment day out there of course Rhea and dominic ends up coming out there or whatnot and dominic gets dispatched quickly with jay jay ends up hitting them with a super kick he dispatches him quickly but then this was a funny part this nigga <laughs> nigga jay damn near forgot he's in a tag team championship match and he sees Rhea. he's looking her up and down she's looking at him and he damn near is flirting with Rhea, and Rhea is flirting with Jay back. I'm like, Jay, focus. <laughs> he got lost in the sauce. I know a lot of y'all would have got lost in the sauce 
mid match. She's smiling at him. You know, I don't know what they were saying, but he was he was looking at her like, yeah, you look good. You what's good or whatnot. But he ends up getting distracted. That's obviously her game plan <clears throat> to distract Jay Uso. Jay ends up, you know, getting distracted and damn near could have cost them the match. But I did find that was funny. At one point, Rhea hits Jay with the briefcase, which is once again why you got to be careful with some of these women. Rhea hits Jay with the briefcase. The ref didn't see it because the number number game started to catch up with him. Even JD McDonough, McDonough came out there to help on behalf of Judgment Day. And at that point, I thought the match was over. Once he got hit with the briefcase, I thought the match was over. I thought they were going to retain. But no, Jay kicked out at two. I was surprised. The crowd was surprised. Everyone in the chat uh, on the live stream was surprised. That was a, a really good false finish because I really did think that it, the match was over. <laughs> so they're by the table area. There's a lot of chaos. Judgment Day over there, you know, trying to take advantage of the ref not being able to really see what's happening behind his back. And I want to say there's a moment where uh, Damian Priest removes the stuff off the table, uh, the announcer's table by the ring, and he's about to hit, he's about to, you know, he's about to put Cody Rhodes through the table. They're both on the top of the table or whatnot, and Cody is able to move out the way at the same time time jd mcdonough ends up hitting damian priest right into his leg while he's standing up and here's the thing in the match at some point damian priest i'm guessing per storyline wise injured his knee injured his leg i'm not sure if it was the same leg but he injured his leg during the match he was already limping and then when jd smashed the briefcase into damian priest's leg and then Cody hits the, the crossroads onto the table. Damian Priest was done. Threw up an X for Damian Priest. He was out for the rest of the match. He was laying face flat on the table because JD McDonough pretty much messed up. He, he cost, he, he pretty much took out Damian Priest. He was done. And when you look at the replay, it looked kind of brutal. Like that, that, that briefcase shot to Damian Priest's leg made his knee somewhat buckle inside. It looked it looked pretty pretty gruesome a little bit. Not not in uh turn your head away, but it it looked like you know make you wince a little bit. So Damian Priest is out. Then Jay goes over the top rope, dives onto uh J D McDonough, and uh, I want to say it's uh Finn Balor. Finn Balor gets put back into the ring. Or whatnot, and then this was such a cool move. And I gotta go to my notes because you guys came up with some pretty cool uh tag team uh tag team name. So Jay has Finn Balor held up, and then Cody is going off the uh springboarding off the I believe the second row for his Cody cutter. But he has, Jay has him like in the 1D position. And they hit the move simultaneously. Cody is the Cody cutter. And they have him, and Jay has him in the 1D position. And some of y'all came up with a cool name. Uh, the Usi cutter. I, that's what I'm going to call it. Because that shit looked so cool, man. The Usi cutter. That's what, that's what we're calling it, man. So, basically... Finn Balor got hit with the Uzi cu uh, cutter. It was a cool combination tag team move that they did. That was a, such a dope spot. And then to add insult to injury, to make sure that it's over, this match is done, Cody picks up Finn Balor, and he hits him with the crossroads. For the one, two, and three, and you have your new undisputed tag team champs. I was shocked. I lost it. Chat went crazy. Crowd went crazy. I was not expecting that. That match was fun. That was great. Back-to-back <clears throat> -back pay per views The tag team matches were fantastic. Back-to-back -back pay per views Sammy and Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor and Damian Priest in that, uh, that street fight match. Fantastic. For the titles, for the tag team titles, fantastic. 
Same here. This was great. And I was not expecting this. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Because now they are not tag team champs. What's going to happen with Judgment Day? Rhea's definitely pissed with J.D. McDonough. And you know Damian Priest is pissed with J.D. McDonough. So what's going to happen to him? It's going to be very interesting to see what happens going forward with them. But this even opens up even more possibilities because guess what? Jay Uso is once again the undisputed tag team champ, but this time he's the tag team champ with Cody. How is Roman going to feel about that? How is Jimmy going to feel that his own brother is once again tag team champ? With Cody. Roman. Knowing that. Pretty much one of his ops. One of the people. That he you know. Can beat at Wrestlemania. He's not a big fan of. Teamed up with his family member. That used to be in the bloodline. And now they're tag champs. I'm going to be interested to see. If and when Roman. Acknowledges that. Because that. That that could really bring in some extra story elements. Like, not only did he get involved in family business, he's helping him win championships. What the hell is going on here? Going to be interesting to see what happens with that. But that was a fantastic match. For me, that was match of the night. Now, the match, this match right here, the next match, Street Profits versus Bobby Lashley. Um, Oh, not Street um, versus Bobby Lashley. Street Profits and Bobby Lashley versus LWO and a mystery partner or whatnot. Uh, this match I was expecting a lot more from, but it, it it didn't really hit as as much as I was expecting it to. Mainly because they just they had to follow up such a hot, incredible opening match with a surprising title chain and title change and Jay Uso and and fucking Cody Rhodes being tag team champs. No one I I don't think it predicted that. So they're automatically hype off that. And it was kind of hard to follow that. They had the opportunity, but I think the way they structured the match to me was kind of weird. So when they came out there, it was only, it was only, Rey Mysterio only had him and his tag partner, but you didn't know who the third partner was. And we know he said he was going to get somebody to help, but why they didn't come out and help was the weird thing. They, they didn't come out till halfway through the match. Well, towards the end of the match, honestly, which was, once again, kind of weird. Um, majority of the match, Ray was catching the beats from all members of, of well, not they're not an official group yet, but he was catching the beats from um, Street Profits and Bobby Lashley throughout the match. And I was loving their heel-like aggressiveness, the Street Profits, loving them being aggressive, talking their trash, and, and beating up on the baby faces. That's... It's what you're supposed to do. Um, at one point, Zelina Vega gets involved by taking out Montez Ford. And then, like I said, towards the end of the match, it was like maybe five minutes left in the match. And the only reason why I say five minutes left is because Carlito comes out there. Crowd goes crazy. And I expected it was going to be Carlito. Carlito hits a few moves. It was like maybe after he came out, it was like five minutes later, the match was done. That's why I say like five minutes left. <laughs> but Carlito comes out there, hits a couple of moves. Crowd goes crazy for him or whatnot. Uh, Carlito ends up hitting the backstabber on Montez Ford and gets the win. He was only out there for about five minutes. That's it. Wasn't that long. And the match was done and they won. Once again, I would have preferred they just, I don't know, just had him come out there from the beginning. It would have been a cool thing to hear. And then you still could have had a match. Crowd would have been even more hyped. Because Carlito is out there. And then you could have set up a situation where Carlito ends up getting like the hot tag or whatnot. And then he gets into the match. That could have been something cool. I don't know what the situation was. But he looked like he was in great shape. Looked like he could have went out there for, for a good, you know, 10 to 15 minute match. That's how long the match was. He only came out there for the last five minutes. He was literally watching these guys. If you want to look at it from a, a, a realism standpoint... He was watching Ray and his tag team partner get beat up. And then he's like, you know what? Now I'm going to come out there. Hit my music. I was like, all right. So really disappointed on that one. I was expecting a little bit more. Expecting better. I figured Carlito was going to be uh, the special guest. Um, but 
overall, the positives is got to see Carlito back in a WWE ring. It's good. Uh, I didn't. I'm not a big fan of uh, the uh, Street Profits and Bobby Lashley losing in this situation in this fashion. So I don't know what they do with them, but they need to give them some um, some momentum and consistent momentum going forward. Um, so yeah, that was okay for me. It was cool to see Carlito back. Next we got. EO versus Charlotte versus Asuka. Now, right off the back, Asuka said, I ain't here to play games. Asuka spits in Charlotte's face with the miss. Charlotte starts screaming in pain. It's, it was a beautiful sight. <laughs> She's screaming in pain. She has to kind of set out for a little bit while, peop while people help her, you know, with her eyes being on fire by the ringside, some medical officials. And, you know, pretty much is EO and Asuka having their back and forth. Fourth, Once Charlotte does get involved back into the match, you can start hearing boos. Lately, Charlotte has not been getting booed since she's been back. She's actually been booked like a baby face for the most part. But tonight it was one of the first nights I've heard where she actually was getting boos. When she was doing this as she was taking out EO and Asuka and, you know, kind of gloating around. She was getting some booze. It would be very interesting to see if they really expound upon that because I always thought Charlotte's better as a heel anyway. Uh, there was a nice Tower of Doom spot. Basically, um, Charlotte had EO on her shoulders on the second rope, and then you had Asuka come from underneath them and kind of, you, know, uh, you know, slam everyone down. And it's crazy because obviously EO's at the top on Charlotte's shoulders. So when she falls, she kind of falls and tumbles and rolls. It was a beautiful spot. Definitely got the crowd hype. Very, very impressive what they did there. Um, there was at one point EO and Oscar had Charlotte in like this double submission. And it looks like Charlotte's about to tap. She has really nowhere to go. But then Oscar uh, eventually starts attacking EO and they kind of break the hold. Then Bailey comes out there to help EO as EO's on the outside. Bailey comes out there to try to get EO back into the ring. Uh, Charlotte ends up kicking EO or whatnot in the face and she falls back out in the ring. And you can see, you can hear EO when she realized that Bailey was helping her, telling her, hey, go back in the back. I don't need your help. Go back in the back. I don't need your help. Well, in hindsight, that may not have been true because ultimately, Bailey is the reason why EO ends up winning this match. Because there's at some point, um, Asuka it gets caught into the figure eight. And obviously, Charlotte is bridged in the figure eight. It's a figure four, and then she bridges it and turns into the figure eight. Asuka is writhing in pain. Bailey goes to the opposite side of the ring. Ref's not paying attention because Bailey gets on top. You know, gets into, you know, gets up on the ring to distract the ref. Asuka's tapping at this point, but EO goes from the top row, hits a moonsaw, saw on Charlotte while she's in the bridge position. Ref turns around and hits the one, two, three, and EO retains with the help of Bailey. Even though EO didn't want her help, it definitely came in clutch because Bailey essentially helped her win, retain the title because Asuka tapped. And obviously, that's going to be something that they bring up. I don't know if if it's going to be a situation where now Charlotte's going to want to rematch in some situation where maybe no one can interfere. I don't know. I really want to see more so EO and Bailey have their interaction. Because, once again, even though EO didn't want her help, Bailey actually was the reason why she retained. Because if she didn't, Asuka was tapping which means Charlotte would have won. And maybe that creates some argument and Bailey can be like, well, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have your title because Asuka tapped. I'm the reason why you have your title. I distracted the ref. So be interested in what they do with that. That's the dynamic I really want to see. EO and Bailey. But overall, it started off slow, but the match picked up as I expected. EO retained in the, and that was the right decision. Pat McAfee comes out there. Oh, well, not. He, you know, wants, you know, Tell everybody, you know what I'm saying? He had to be there. He had to call the upcoming match. He had to be there. He had this, the Colts WWE 
uh, style championship. Crowd went crazy for Pat McAfee. We always love Pat McAfee. He even made some jokes. You know what I'm saying? He's like, glad to, can't wait to be out there doing commentary with Michael Cole and, and Corey Graves hating ass. I love Pat McAfee. He's fucking fantastic. And he he went, he had to be a part of calling the next match, LA Knight and John Cena versus Solo and Jimmy Uso. And boy, oh boy, this was all LA Knight. Yeah. Crowd was crazy for him. John Cena comes out there, obviously gets a big reaction. When LA Knight came out there, he got a mega star reaction. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Before the match even began, bro, you would think the crowd would be chanting the 16-time world champion John Cena. No. The beginning of this match, they were chanting nothing but LA Knight. That's all you heard. LA Knight chants. And before we even get into the match, once again, Jimmy Uso being the cringe self that he is now, uh, he was trying to get a handshake from Solo, and Solo just turned away and walked outside the ring, you know, stand on a ring apron. And <laughs> the sticky Jimmy just left there, just just hanging, just no handshake. Like, I don't know why you try keep trying to get a handshake from him, bro. He's not going to give you one. I always find that funny. So pretty much the majority of this match, and they worked like an old school tag team match. The majority of the match was to keep LA Knight out the match. Obviously, he's the hot tag. And everyone wants to see him in the match. So the majority of this match was John Cena getting beat up. And as he progressively gets beat up by Solo and Jimmy, his hair gets more wilder and wilder to reveal the bald spot. It was crazy. John Cena was single-handed. It was a two-on-one handicap match for the majority of the match. Like, any offense he get, they stopped it. Any, there's moments he's reaching, he's right there, and they stop him from tagging LA Knight because, once again, they're building up the tension. He is the hot tag. That was it. That was the objective of the match, and it worked to perfection. John was getting beat up for the majority of the match, but when John finally got that hot, hot tag to LA Knight, the crowd went crazy just crazy to the point where he had solo and jimmy just wobbling as he's throwing punches to each of them he'll throw one punch to jimmy one punch to jay one punch to jimmy one punch to jay and all you hear is yeah 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 it, it was such a good moment man anything he did offensively just crowd was all behind it John Cena hits the five knuckle shuffle on Jimmy, and then LA Knight hits his finisher, the blunt force uh, trauma on Jimmy, and pins him for the win, which is what I was hoping for. Solo ends up getting knocked out of the ring. Solo doesn't need to eat a pin. Jimmy was the one to eat the pin by LA Knight. Crowd went crazy for that, and you can see Roman Reigns, not Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman on the phone supposedly talking to Roman Reigns as Solo is walking next to him up the ramp. But Jimmy's not there because Jimmy is the one who ate the pin. And this is all going to come back to when Roman comes back on SmackDown. Obviously, he's going to have some issues with that. Jimmy is acting like the tribal chief, and he lost. He's the one that got pinned. Fun match. Fun match. Some people were saying in the in the chat this could have been a SmackDown main event, which I understand. It, it wasn't nothing blockbuster but i think it was entertaining and once again this was more of a showcase to show that la knight is really the top baby face in the company he's one of the top baby faces he is that over and anytime you can expound on his momentum and make the fans happy by seeing him and him getting the win i'm all for it this was fun exactly what it needed to be and uh, we go to a segment in the back after the end of the match. Damien is like, you know what? I don't give a damn. He's back there with his Judgment Day buddies. He said, uh, I don't give a damn. I'm about to, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to, I'm, I'm cashing in tonight or whatnot. Finn's like, no, nah, man, don't do it. Dominic's like, no, nah, man, don't do it. You're not 
Your leg is banged up. Your knee is banged up. And then Rhea, being the leader that she is, she's like, no, don't go out there. You're not 100%. We're going to wait for you to go out there to, you know, potentially cash in. Because that's really what his mind was. And I think a lot of us fans, our minds were in the realm of he's going to cash in. It makes sense for him to cash in after this last man standing match. Because whoever wins is going to be pretty much drained uh, and tired. And that was his mindset too. But they were like, no. And Rhea said, give me the briefcase. She took the briefcase and sat him down. And like, nah, you need to heal up first before we try to cash in. And that was their way to kind of, even though they put it out there, I know some people were still expecting him to cash in, but that's their way to write in a situation why he doesn't cash in because of him being pretty much injured or whatnot. And JD McDonough, caught, you know, making the injury even worse. So Shinsuke versus Seth, last man standing match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Or whatnot. And this was fun. This was very fun. I I I this in my opinion, this was definitely better than their first uh first matchup they had at I believe it was I wanna say was that payback? I think that may have been payback. I think that was their first matchup at payback. Um but yeah, this was this was definitely much better than their first matchup. Um Seth Got to the nitty gritty. He was trying to end this early. He exposed the concrete, uh, the concrete under the 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 padding by the ringside area where they had the padded like the mats. He exposed the concrete or whatnot. He he was trying to put Shinsuke on the concrete. Uh, Seth start pulling out weapons from under the ring. He's pulling out kendo sticks, trash cans. Uh, chairs. He's pulling out. Uh, tables. Crowd wanted tables. He's pulling it out. Um, at one point, Shinsuke pulled out some nunchucks and started hitting Seth with it, and those were looking like it hurt. <laughs> Seth was selling them, but I don't even think it had to. I was wondering why he, uh, Shinsuke dropped the nunchucks. I would have kept using them or whatnot. Seth starts beating Shinsuke with the kendo stick. Once he gets the upper hand, starts whacking the hell out of him with the kendo stick. Uh, Shinsuke tried to run into Seth in, onto a table that was propped up in the corner of the ring, but Seth moved out the way. Shinsuke hits the table, doesn't completely break it, but he hits the table, um, kind of cracks it up a little bit. Um, Shinsuke hits Seth with a low blow while they're in the crowd area. They go up to the ramp and there's like, well, they go through the crowd and there's like this little side area on the side of the entranceway. Oh, what not in uh you know it's a little alley where you can go up to the no, the concession stands and stuff they're on the stair area and we know shinsuke love using the low blow tactic to win matches it's, it's his bread and butter and he did the same thing and he ends up pushing he ends up uh pushing seth it was supposed to be onto the concrete floor but i think they accidentally shot him being falling on this padded area because you can tell it's a padded area they push he pushes them on it but you can tell it's there so and they even show a shot of him falling on it i don't know if they were supposed to i think they were maybe were supposed to cut have a low uh uh higher like a low angle facing up to towards them to make it seem like he fell off you know higher than he really did and onto the concrete and cut to him rolling on the concrete but you can see him bounce off this plat like this padded area and then he's just selling it and then on commentary i believe michael cole said he fell onto the concrete but he really didn't he rolled onto it but he didn't fall from the initial fall but seth was definitely selling it at that point uh then uh seth went for the pedigree onto the exposed uh concrete area that he pulled up at the beginning of the match but shinsuke reverses it Flips him over and he falls onto the concrete himself. Oh my goodness. If that don't take out your back, I don't know what will. He was writhing in pain. It wasn't looking good for Seth for the rest of this match. It looked like at any moment it's going to be over. And even Michael Cole was pretty much saying like Seth, pretty much from that point on, he was like, Seth, just give it up. Let your pride go, bro. Live to fight another day. It's not worth it. So, since, uh, not since, uh, Seth places a ladder. He placed a ladder 
early in the match by the announcement table. He cleared it off already, but Shinsuke was laying on it, but he moved out the way. So they went back to the table, and then he had Shinsuke laying on it again or whatnot. Oh, actually, no, I'm skipping the part. Let, let, me, let me go back first. Let me go back first. So there's another table spot. They, they use all the weapons. I'm going to get to that spot. But there's another table spot where Seth is laying on the outside. They set up a table. Shinsuke set up a table. Shinsuke's on the uh, ring apron. He jumps, hits a double knee while Seth is laying on the table all the way to the ground. Breaks the table. Damn near breaks Seth in half. Seth is writhing in pain, but he also hits his knee onto the floor the padded floor but you know it still hurts so he was you know you know in pain with his knee but he definitely <laughs> definitely did some damage to Seth Seth barely made the 10 count or whatnot and then we go to the announcer table spot with the ladder spot um and then at this point Seth has him on the table laying down but then Shinsuke gets up climbs on the opposite side of the ladder and it looks like Seth is about to superplex him over the ladder onto the table. But Shinsuke ends up spitting some red mist into Seth's face. And then Seth ends up falling onto the table. The table breaks. And it looks like it's over. Looks like the match is done. But Seth barely beats the 10 count. I mean, barely somehow beats the 10 count. So, and at this point, Michael Cole's just screaming at Steph, Seth to stay down. Shinsuke puts him back into the ring. He hits Seth. There's a chair propped up in the ring. He hits a backbreaker onto the chair. And then he ends, he follows it up with a Kinshasa to Seth through the, the other table that was propped up in the corner that was cracked. He kinshasa him through that table. It completely broke. It fell on top of him. The, the remains of the table. You're thinking it's over then. It gets, he's at the edge of the ring. <clears throat> I want to say he gets to like nine and a half. And Seth, smart, knowing where he was in the ring, he just rolls to the side and he, and he just falls. Like he lets his legs hit the ground first and uses the ring as, uh, <clears throat> as a means to... Uh, still be standing to beat the 10 count, which was smart. I like what he did there. Still somehow was able to beat the 10 count. <clears throat> so at this point, Shinsuke is like, enough of this. So he sends them back into the crowded area. They go to this high elevated area, not quite into the stands like they were before, but this it's like a high platform area. And there's like these tables covered on cloth down below. So I'm thinking, oh, it's, it's about to end bad for Seth if he can't get out of this. Shinsuke started punching him and kicking him or whatnot. And then he's about to uh, pretty much slam him onto those tables, it looks like, or down below from where he there at this elevated position. Seth fights out of it or whatnot. And he hits him with a pedigree on this little platform. Then he hits him with a stomp on this platform. And then he picks him up and hits him with the falcon arrow from this elevated platform to the two tables down below. Seth is writhing in pain. Shinsuke is writhing in pain. But ultimately, Seth barely makes the 10 count while Shinsuke couldn't. And that's how the match ends. Seth retains. And that was a beautiful Falcon Arrow. Crowd chanting, holy shit. That was great. That was a that was a crazy way to end the match. Seth retains the World Heavyweight Championship. As I expected. I know a lot of us were expecting a cash in, but once again, they kind of wrote it in a way where <clears throat> obviously Damian Priest wasn't physically fit to go in for that cash in. So and that's how the show ends. I know some people were thinking it was going to be something else, but I personally, it, it did what it was supposed to do. This pay-per-view was pretty much right where it needed to be. We got in, we got out. It didn't overstay its welcome. I can appreciate that. Question is, who will be Shinsuke's next opponent? Not Shinsuke, uh, Seth Rollins' next opponent. Who is next in line to challenge Seth Rollins for that World Heavyweight Championship? We will find out in these upcoming weeks. But yeah, overall, show was solid. It was enjoyable. That first match, that tag team match was fantastic. I love that match. I gave that a 10 out of 10. That match was great. And everything else 
was okay to serviceable or whatnot. And that last man standing match was really good too. All right? It was a good way to end off the show. Overall, I give the show a solid, I believe I said uh, a seven and a half out of 10. It was like a seven and a half out of 10. It was a solid show, solid, good show. Um, even John Cena match, John Cena LA night match, that was pretty enjoyable. So seven and a half out of 10. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see where things go moving forward. So comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite match of the night. What was your least favorite match of the night? Uh, and what do you think is going to happen going forward with all the potential storylines that they have uh, cooking up right now? But I appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Roll to 150K. I'm still here on the speed of YouTube. The rest of the champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.